Nice for the Uruguayan curls one in. Oh, Middlesbrough take the lead! What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of our FM24 Beta Career Mode here with the mighty Borra here today for two games in the championship but also we have jumped into the action in the midst of deadline day with 10 hours to go and I'll let you guys know why we're jumping into deadline day in a minute because it's went from looking like one that would be rather uneventful to one that has changed on the dime of a deal that's not even anything to do with us directly i'll explain all in a moment but anyway the housekeeping out the way of course we've had a couple of games in between the last episode and it's safe to say we've we've hit a bit of an inconsistent patch i mean we had an amazing winning streak albeit against teams who you'd maybe expect us to beat on paper we obviously beat coventry lost to plymouth in the fa cup and then had that ridiculous um, draw to Millwall, which we should have won and absolutely bottled. And thankfully, it's not knocked us completely, as we did beat Rotherham 4-2 in the following match. But we had to come from behind twice, which isn't ideal. We had to come from behind twice, conceded two poor goals again. We've just started to concede a few goals in the last few games. Luckily, we had the firepower in the squad to turn the result around and wrap the game up and look make it look rather comfortable in the end. Winning 4-2. We then went to Birmingham City and they're a bit of a bogey team for us in this Korean mode. Birmingham, they're of course flying high in the championship. Still under Wayne Rooney as it stands. Third they are at the moment, trying to catch the top two. Their squad's ridiculous, let's be fair. They've made some really good signings. And uh, yeah, we just still can't beat Birmingham. We gave it a good go. We got ourselves back into the game second half. But yeah, stats-wise... Across the park, we just weren't quite as good as Birmingham on the day. And uh, yeah, that was our first league defeat since the start of December, which is a bit of a shame, but it's one we'll hopefully shake off pretty quickly today. We've got Sunderland in the tease weird derby where we're hoping to get revenge. We, of course, lost 3-0 to Sunderland in the midst of that appalling run of form earlier in the season, which nearly saw us get the sack and it turned the fans against us big time. So we cannot afford to lose to Sunderland again, before then also hosting Bristol City. So what's happening in the world of transfers? Well, nothing's happened yet. We've had a couple of players go out on loan, a couple of players who've rejected loans, our contracts have been rejected. So Jack Stott is currently possibly, or was nearly out, going to Coventry. We've had Sonny Finch to Carlisle, Callum Kavanagh to Leicester, all of which fell through. Max Metcalf does look like he might be heading out to Annan Athletic on loan. Paddy McNair did have a few more offers in for him, but he's at the point now where he's in the final six months and teams can basically approach him and get him for free. They can sign him on a pre-contract agreement. And I can't remember the two teams. It might have been... There was, I think there was two Turkish teams who come in for him. And, of course, we're at the point now where we can't we can't do anything. It, it you know It's a pre-contract. It's up to the player. And he turned down both their offers. So Paddy McNair will remain at the club. Matt Clark, he's also remaining at the club. Of course, we have promised him that he would get sent out on loan. And I was I was hoping that, you know, depending on what happened with Paddy McNair, that would help us decide what's happening with Matt Clark. That's still very much up in the air on deadline day. And we've also been advised that we should send Josh Coburn out on loan. And I was going to do that if we got Pats and Dakar in, but that transfer is also still up in the air. Terms have been agreed between us and the club. The problem is we didn't, I say didn't, we didn't until about a few minutes ago have the funds available to basically afford the £2.6 million or £2.4 million loan fee overall as well as his wages. We had to basically adjust the budget all the way down to the point to which we were going to be you know, nowhere near the, the, the committed spending and we'd be losing money week on week and one of our objectives is to cost work within the wage budget. So I thought unless something drastic happens on deadline day, which it wasn't looking likely, there wasn't really, you know, a chance that Borough were gonna that we were gonna be able to get the deal through. However, however, something out of our hands has happened. Marcus Tavernier, who left Borough 
I mean, what will it be now? Two seasons ago almost. Of course, he left us to go to Bournemouth. Bournemouth have now sold him to Celtic for 13.75 million, which means we have been pocketed 550k in some sort of solidarity additional payment thing whatever so big ups to whoever put that in the contract when we sold Taft to Bournemouth in the first place because we've now had that additional 500k which should get us over the line and give us just enough breathing space to bring in Pat Sandaka on loan so I'm going to try and find the email that uh, here it is so this was what we were looking at so 2.4 million was required of course, we only had 2.2 at the time. We now have enough in the loan budget to, or in the, the wage budget, to get this one done, I believe. So we're down the final five hours, and an offer has come in for Matt Clark. This is where we have to make a decision on whether we want to let him go out on loan. Paddy McNair is likely to be staying, and obviously until the end of his contract at the end of the season. So we might be able to let Matt Clark go here. There is a part of me that's still a little bit unsure, but we've promised him. I think he'll want that to go through. Um, I wonder if there is a... Not that we'll ever need a, a callback clause, but... Ah, do we let this one go? Do we put it through? Looks like they're willing to pay all of his wages. We've not needed him yet. I'm going to accept that. Matt Clark will be happy with that. There is a, um, a defender from Villa. Courtney House is transfer listed for just over a million. So I'm hoping if something happens with Dakar or something doesn't happen with Dakar, we might be able to maybe get another defender in from there. Okay, here we go. So Dakar set to move to Middlesbrough on loan. We have now got a, a, wage, a transfer budget of 2.7 as opposed to 2.4, which means we do have enough. So I think Pats and Dakar is a pretty good signing at this stage. We will accept that and Pats and Dakar will join the Borough on loan for the rest of the season, which I think is a cool signing. Now, this was something I did not expect. I dropped a loan offer in for Courtney House from Aston Villa. Of course, now we've lost Matt Clark. And he is a first-team quality championship defender, at the very least. And he's up for sale, mostly, I think. Is he loan list? I think he's transfer listed. And I stuck a loan bid in there thinking Villa probably won't accept a loan. They've accepted the loan. And I'm now suddenly... Thinking, oh my god, should I have done that? Because of course Paddy McNair's leaving, but this is only a temporary loan. So this is like a body we possibly don't need in. I thought I'd test the waters to see what come of it. And Villa have accepted it, which I did not see coming. I mean, he would be a fantastic defender to have. I just didn't expect it. So let's see how he, how he compares to Dale Fry then. So... They're pretty equal. Dale Fry isn't as strong, isn't as quick, doesn't have the vision. House is better technically, but not as good aerially. Mentally, they're both the same, but Fry is better at defending, which essentially is his job. I mean, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, there is interest from Celtic in Dale Fry, so that could happen. Um, I might hang on and oh, we're in the final hour. I can't hang on. This is it. Oh my god, I put myself into a position where I've got a, a defender in when we might not even need a defender in. I mean, I tested the water. <laughs> Let's see what we've got at centre-back. So, Paddy McNair, of course, to be fair, he's done really well for us this season. Um, he is leaving. He's two and a half stars. Courtney House is an upgrade on what we've got, essentially. And, um, you know, if Fry or Lennon were to get injured, I guess, Courtney House could come in. Um... Maybe he can compete with Dale Fry for that second spot, and if Lenahan feels you know he's he needs resting or whatever, we can we can bring in Courtney House instead. I mean he's the same age as Paddy. Paddy's obviously looking to negotiate a deal elsewhere, so I'm going to accept that. We're going to accept a deal for Courtney House out the blue, a deal that's come from absolutely nowhere, but we've got him in 25 grand a week. 
and we can register him straight away. Did not see that coming, but there we go, let's assign him a squad number. And we've uh, bolstered our centre-backs, which isn't a position I ever thought we'd be bolstering, but... There we go, we've done it. But um, yeah, we're now going to move on to the big opening game, the Tees. We are Derby, interesting there to see that we have the fifth highest wage bill in the championship, the second highest of the non-relegated sides, which is quite an intriguing stat. But now it's time for us to get revenge on our rivals, and it couldn't be set up any more juicier because we're both on the brink, looking in to potentially getting in to the top six. So let's try and get revenge as we host the Mackhams. So here we are then, ahead of the tees, we are Derby. A massive, massive game for us, not just in the league currently, but just to try and get back at that huge defeat we had earlier in the season. So Senny Deng is in goal, back from the African Cup of Nations. Back four is pretty much the same as is, despite us bringing in Courtney House. Lucas Engel gets in ahead of Bangura. The midfield three remain as is two. Isaiah Jones comes back in after his injury, of course. He is only recommended 75 minutes of action, so we will ensure that we monitor that. Rogers stays in at left wing because, of course, McGree is away with Australia still. And Marcus Force will retain his place up front. Lath picked up a knock. Um, I think he has a tight calf, so he's on the bench. He's likely to not make an appearance so if we are going to bring someone off the bench up front it's Pats and Daka and what a chance for the new boys to make themselves an instant hero on T side by making a name for themselves and possibly scoring the winner in front of 33,000 fans at the Riverside. Let's make that home advantage count as I keep saying we're not going to get caught up in the occasion they beat us 3-0 at their place. Let's try and beat them 3-0 at ours. Why have you been able to build a good recent home record? without Nothing without the fans. Nothing without the fans. How do you approach this match with both teams in good form? Um, they're a very good team. We're, re we're going to relish the challenge and look at that. A absolute packed out Riverside. Not an empty seat in the house. And I'm hoping we can not only beat Sunderland, get revenge, but this will help us close the gap on... The playoffs and of course we did lose to Birmingham last time out we do not want to lose back-to-back -back games it'll be the first time that's happened in a while and we saw last time the damage that a defeat to Sunderland did on the board the supporters their thoughts on us the grade we had so this is a big game pretty much in every sense every which way you look at it in two minutes in we've got a corner already Dale Fry puts us in the lead what a start by the boys. It's only took us three minutes to strike early. And we lead the tees. We are Derby from a corner. Lucas Engel and it is the Teesside Lighthouse. Dale Fry putting us 1-0 up. A fantastic goal from Dale Fry. So guys, I've had to restart the recording briefly because my OBS froze. So I did re-edit the first goal into the highlights. And I've just restarted OBS in time. For this, Morgan Rogers intercepting the ball in Sunderland's midfield, cuts inside, Pizarro doesn't manage to tackle him and Rogers puts the ball into the far corner and doubles our lead here in the tees. We are Derby, it's been a dream start, 10 minutes in, fantastic stuff from the boys. It's a shame my OBS has decided to completely give up at the start of this. But we've got both goals in there. And Sunderland looking for an instant response there. And it was over the bar. Good move on the inside. But it was blasted over the bar. Still, oh, this is in a dangerous position. Patrick Roberts, he's their best player. He's their top scorer. 15 goals this season. I've got a bad feeling this could be heading. Oh, they've played it short. And Pizarro gets a goal back for Sunderland. They've caught us completely napping there. I mean, look, he's on his own in the penalty spot. How's nobody picked him up? That's a disappointing goal to concede. And we've basically gifted Sunderland a route back into the game via some pretty poor concentration, you would say, but some very good play on the right-hand side. Jones loses it, though, and Sunderland looking to play it out quickly in a tight area. Dale Fry into Lewis O'Brien Hackney. We've made so many errors of late, I'm just worried we're going to lose the ball at any point. 
And they'll counter-attack as Engel plays it in a force and that's blocked. A potentially goal-saving block there by one of the Sunderland defenders and it could end up being a Sunderland highlight here because they've turned our defence and turned us over with ease and Elise plays it in but nothing comes of it. Got really worried there that that was going to be a vintage counter-attack from Sunderland but we're going to end the half. We've got another highlight here though on the right-hand side. Smith plays it into Isaiah Jones. He plays it back to Smith. Oh, beautiful triangle there. Back house into Jones. And Jones into force. It's vintage Isaiah Jones to the byline. Plays it low across the box. And it's the top goal scorer, Marcus Force. Look at the triangle here. It's beautiful. Jones to Smith to Hackney. Oh, Housen back to Jones to the byline where he's at his most dangerous. Force is there to tap it in. Absolutely appalling defending by Sunderland. And we've doubled our lead not quite in time for half time because here comes Sunderland once again. Are they going to get a, ball, a goal back here and make it 3 2? They are going to make it 3 2, but it's offside. The flag is up. Rusin, it might be pronounced with a. I mean, that's a great goal as well, to be fair, by Sunderland. Roberts intertwining there. Pizarro beats Hackney Neal. Great play, but I think he is offside. Are we going to get a, a look at the lines? No, we're not. And an incredibly entertaining half comes to an end. We lead it, but I think there are goals left in this game and it's still very much up in the air, I think. Um, so is there a way we can say, just keep going? You're doing brilliantly, keep going. And I'm going to see if there's any way we can sort of make them aware of complacency, but I won't say any more. I'm just thinking back to that Millwall game when we, of course, led 3-1 and ended up somehow losing or drawing and dropping two points in what was a one of the most frustrating games ever. But it looks like we're managing the game in the early stages. No highlights of note. Roberts has gone off, which is a real plus for us, and we have a corner here. This could be a big moment. Lucas Engel whips it in. Dale Fry's up there once again, but it's cleared as far as Morgan Rogers on the right-hand side. Rogers beats his man. He's full of confidence now. Cuts it into Marcus Force, and that should be that. It's another goal for Force. Once again, from the right-hand side, getting to that byline. Low ball into the box, and Marcus Force is there to tap it home in that poacher's position where he's been so effective this season. I'm still not going to get too carried away. Because of what happened against Millwall. But that could be what signs and seals the deal. As we're looking for more here. Is Force is in the box again. Is he going to get a hat-trick? He plays it back to Rogers, who's brought down. It's a penalty. A penalty to the Borough. And Force has a chance. He makes it five for the Borough. And it's a tease. We a derby hat-trick for Marcus Force. He's absolutely Flying towards that golden boot. And he's got himself a hat-trick. What a performance. What a way to bounce back. We've battered Sunderland in our own backyard. Incredible scenes. And this was the way to get revenge on Sunderland. So Lewis O'Brien's one of the few who's not played too well. And is looking a little complacent. So we'll swap him out for Dan Barlasser. And we'll have him as a defensive ball winning midfielder. I think now's a good time. Daryl Enahan, he's feeling complacent. So why not bring Courtney House on for his debut? And I'm also going to do the same for Patson Dacker. He's going to replace the man who got the hat trick. He's going to come off. He's going to get a standing evasion. Marcus Force will come off for him. And we'll also swap Isaiah Jones out. He was, of course, only meant to play 75 minutes. So we will keep that in mind. And he'll come off for a manual Latte Lath. This has been as good of a tease we a derby as I think we could have ever dreamed of. But Sunderland could still pick up a goal or two. Isaiah Jones with a wonderful challenge there. I think that might be his last act of the game. But I'd like to hope from here we should be able to manage the game. I mean, six shots on target, five goals scored. It is clinical. As clinical as it gets, and it looks like we are just managing this one out, ticking towards the 90th minute. What a way to get revenge on Sunderland. 
by hitting them for five at the Riverside in front of 33,000 fans. What a way to get them on side and what a way to boost morale around the club. Sunderland are going to try. Oh, that's a brilliant ball into Dan Neal. That's a fantastic goal. In fairness, I'm not getting that nervous, but it's a good goal. It's a good goal. It's a very good ball in behind into uh, into the four. What a ball from Jack Clark. That's amazing. And Dan Neal does get a goal back for Sunderland. If it was 4-2, I'd maybe be getting nervous. If it was 4-3, if it was 4-3, I'd be absolutely well, my heart would be pounding out my chest, but we do have a highlight straight from kickoff here. This is a bit of a concern. If this ends up being a Sunderland highlight and they score, I mean, Latter Lath has just absolutely legged it down the entire right wing, but it's going to be cleared. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm not getting a little bit twitchy here. I mean, he's been allowed to run the full length of the goddamn pitch and Dieng's had to make a save. Okay. That shouldn't happen. There's a lot of complacent Borough players. I'm going to have to ask them to focus. Because we do not want complacency to set in. Daka was the one at the near post getting the ball out. It comes to Pizarro here. He's allowed to run into the box. He's allowed to play the ball wide. He crosses it in. And it's, it's in again. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. I'm not taking any goddamn chances. Oh no. I saw what happened in the Millwall game and I am not letting that happen again. We have just brought Barlasser on so we're going to flip him round with Johnny Housen. We're going to sit Johnny Housen. No. We're going to sit Johnny Housen in between the back five and we're going to bring on Paddy McNair. Stick deal fry in the middle. Oh, you are not doing this to me, Sunderland. Oh, no, you're not. You are not taking this away from me. So, he's gonna. we're going to go defensive. We're going to get Tommy Smith back into a defensive position. We're going to get Lucas Engel back into a defensive position. And we're also going to have Dan Barlasser as a defensive deep-line playmaker. And as well as that, we're going to slow down our tempo and we're going to time waste. I don't care. I do not care. Sunderland ain't doing this to me. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't take this. Why are they getting so many highlights? Ballard. Oh God. Oh God. It's headed out. But Pizarro's there again. He's everywhere. Sirkin. Oh my god, if they make this 5-4. Oh my god, what a 1-2. They're in the box. They're in the box. Oh my god, have they hit the bar? Oh, and it's gone over. Jesus Christ. Dieng saved it. <laughs> Corner. Header. Dieng's there. Bloody hell. Six minutes. <laughs> They've got another highlight. Cross comes in. I can't watch. Penalty. Oh my god. Lata Laugh has pushed Sirkin. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. Jack Clark. Oh my god. This isn't happening. 5-4. Very defensive. Actually, we'll go, we'll go defensive, but I can't believe this is happening. If we hadn't got them five goals, we'd have lost this game. We're into the 98th minute. Oh my God. What on earth was that game? I mean, I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, Sunderland showed some incredible character. We shouldn't be conceding three goals in the final 10 minutes. We've done that so often. We did it against Ipswich and Preston when we were leading 3-0. We hung on to win 3-2. We did it against Millwall, we bottled a 3-1 lead and drew. We almost bottled a 5-1 lead there. I can't believe it. That was... My laptop would have probably gone out the window if we'd have somehow not won this Teeswee derby. But I mean, what a game. Nine goal thriller. We had an extra year 2.7. They had an extra year 3.75. I mean, have we somehow over... 
ex, you know, overperformed and, and got lucky there? I don't know, man. Um, yeah, this isn't an easy rivalry to compete in. It's a great result. It is a great result. Regardless of how the game went, we beat Sunderland and that will boost morale. We put five past them. Um, hopefully we can carry this on for a while longer. Um, <laughs> you got the win. It wasn't a smooth ride. You can say that again. Very few games are. Oh, crikey. 5-4. But that means that we jump Sunderland in the league. It's a double whammy for the Borough fans. And it means we're outside the playoffs on goal difference. Ha Courtney House got a huge bit of praise there. He made his... Uh, oh no, he made I thought it said he made the difference. He made his debut. Let's not get too excited there. Um, Brentford received 250k from Force as he's now hit 30 league goals for Borough. I'm going to praise the guy. It was another hat-trick for Marcus Force. And we will move on. So that gap game was absolutely insane. And we will now head one week into the future for another home game, this time at home, to Bristol City. So here's the team for the Bristol City game. As you can see, it is unchanged from the Sunderland win. I just thought it would be changing for the sake of changing it if we were to make changes. No one's particularly unfit. The match load's not heavy. I did think maybe we'd swap Johnny Housen for Dan Barlasser, but his form of late's actually been really bad. Um, which put me off dropping Barlassa into the starting eleven. We still have to monitor Jones' fitness, but of course the hat-trick man Marcus Force will start once again. The midfield three will stay as is, and Rodgers will continue to be in place of McGree, but he had a great game last time out. I was slightly beginning to question the back four. We did concede four goals in the last game, and we've conceded quite a few of late, but I'm going to keep faith in this back four, but Courtney House and Pats and Dacker are waiting in the wings to potentially nick a starting position from anyone in this team, as is the whole squad. But uh, yeah, a chance for us to go back to back after losing to Birmingham, of course. So let's once again reiterate our wonderful home record and home advantage. But we were able to bounce back from the Birmingham defeat with a win at home. It wasn't easy in the end. I'm hoping this will be a bit more of a controlled performance, one where we, you know, we don't lose control of the game. We can, you know, manage the game a little bit better because nothing wrong with going 5-1 up. I'd love to go 5-1 up in every game, of course I would, but yeah, we don't want to uh, keep doing what we've done multiple times, and that is let the opposition back in. I think complacency is beginning to be quite a reoccurrence with this team. And that will cost us against the big top sides. But anyway, quiet start to this game at home to Bristol City. 15th in the league they are. We are expected to win this game. The board and the fans expect a victory here. But this has been nothing like the Sunderland game. This has been a very, very quiet affair. Not a game for the, uh, the end of season highlight DVD at all. Half an hour in. We do now have a highlight. It's a Borough highlight. And it's us playing the ball out from the very back. Oh, Engels gave the ball away to Amos there. That's careless. A couple of uh, individual errors have started to creep into our game. It's a deep cross. It's very deep headed clear, but it's going to come back in. Naismith now to whip it in. It's another floating cross towards Sykes. And Dieng. Oh, Dieng doesn't get the best header on it. It's bouncing around. It's cleared. It's headed away. How on earth has that not resulted in a Bristol City goal? We've got some goal line technology to look at here, I mean, it's not really giving me much more of an insight, but it hit the bar, it nearly went in, it was cleared off the line, I mean, my God. Another one comes in, a free kick, just goes over the bar, Bristol City suddenly having a really, really good spell. I'll encourage the boys, and hopefully we can have some form of a highlight before the end of the first half or is that going to be it we've actually come into the game a little bit but nothing to really show from it so a very even game I mean we rallied towards the end of the half which is good to see um, but still no highlight which is a bit of a shame but I'll acknowledge that we picked things up at the end but we do need to up things a little bit um, keep going we can win this 
keep going defensively. We're on for a clean sheet at the moment. And I'll just reassure them all that they have the ability to go ahead and change the game. We've got a highlight straight from kickoff here. Tommy Smith plays it out to his eye, Jones. Jones with the low cross. It comes to Morgan Rogers, And there's the opener. We've broken the deadlock. It's straight off of the second half. We asked for a reaction. We've got one instantly. Isaiah Jones running down the right wing. It's a vicious low cross. The defence misses it. Force misses it. The keeper makes a meal of it as well. And there's Morgan Rogers at the back post. And he's starting to come into a bit of form, Morgan Rogers. You know, he's, he's been someone who's kind of gone under the radar this season. He's not really done much either way, good or bad. But it's nice to see him having a positive impact on the team. That's not a positive impact though. Isaiah Jones walking into their left back who gets the ball and plays it forward here. There's, well, Mimetti has somehow found his way through. He's probably their best player, Mimetti, to be fair. Um, and here's Ngakia cutting inside. And that's just wide. Oh, did it take a nick? No, it's a goal kick. But uh, it's been a, a tight game, this one. Still very much hanging in the balance, I feel, as we now surpass the hour mark in this one. And I think it's time to maybe freshen things up. Of course, we have to keep Isaiah Jones' fitness, although he is having a good game. I might leave him on. In fact, they're both having a good game, which is nice to see. Pats and Dakar is going to come on for Marcus Force. He's not quite been able to back his hat-trick up with another hat-trick today, unfortunately. And I uh, don't think we'll change the back two yet. Uh, Dale Fry's playing pretty well too. I'm desperate to see Dan Barlas pick his form up though. So we'll bring him on for Johnny House. And, and we'll see how he works as a roaming playmaker. I've not played him like that before. But Barlasa is a creative player. So we'll see how he plays as a more roaming playmaker. But here we are, 71 minutes. Sunderland are losing 2-0 to Plymouth. That's a big result. But this could be a big moment here as... Oh, it's a great effort from the forward there. Try to bend it into the corner. And we're in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the playoffs for the first time in forever. We're in the playoffs on what could be goal difference. We're in the final 10 minutes now. This is probably the time where we freshen things up. Bangura can come on. We'll drop him back to being a supportive... Fullback, Hackney's booked and tired, so we'll swap him out for Paddy McNair and then we'll drop McNair into the centre of a back five. Bring O'Brien out a little bit, keep him in the same role that he's in. We'll swap McNair for Fry and have McNair as a ball-playing defender. We'll have Tommy Smith primarily doing his job, which is defending. And I think we will now bring Isaiah Jones off for Latte Lath. And we will go cautious. We won't go defensive. In fact, no, we won't. Because the amount of times I've done this in games and we've been caught out by going too kind of drastic the other way. If we're winning 1-0, we go defensive, we concede. If we're losing 1-0, we go attacking, we lose 2-0. Let's stay balanced have the knowledge and the wear of all behind us to not concede and hopefully still have something going forward if Bristol City do push on. But it looks like we might be about to hang on here. It's going to be a tight 1-0 win and a clean sheet, which we've not had in a while. But look at the second half. Nothing really of note other than the goal we got at the very beginning of it. And a win is a win. Should I say we have to raise our performance? I won't say that. Let's just say nice work, everyone. And we've bounced back from that Birmingham defeat. And we're not in the playoffs yet. We were in the playoffs briefly. Leicester must have gotten a goal. Or did they? Oh, no. They were already winning. How are we in sixth then? How's that happened? Have Southampton jumped us? Oh, yeah. Southampton got three goals in the final ten minutes and jumped us. So we are still outside the playoffs on goal difference but four points clear of Sunderland and Huddersfield now we're in the mix we're starting to get ourselves kind of detached from the rest and we're in a bit of a three-way fight with Leicester and Southampton Sol Brin's out for three months he's out on loan that's devastating as I think he was doing quite well at Leighton Orient so we're going to bring him back to the club and treat him 
and I'll give him a little bit of a, he's quite down, so I'll put my arm around him and tell him to not be too worried, and that's helped his morale up a little bit. He'll, of course, be absolutely devastated about that, but yeah, that was a game we didn't outpossess, but we had the better of the XG and the equal shots, and it leaves us in a very good position, well in the mix for this playoff fight. It's going to be an exciting end to the season, I can reassure you of that. And we've bounced back from the Birmingham defeat with two wins in two, two very different wins as well. So, we'll be back, I think, we might come back at the start of March, I might play Stoke and Norwich next up. Um, and then before we know it, we'll be into April and into the final stretch of the season. So we will see what happens from there on in. But two very big wins in this episode, two very big signings as well. Hopefully it will set us up for success come the end of the season. So if you've enjoyed this video guys, as always, do hit the like button and subscribe for much more FM content to come. I'll try and bring this out daily. I do normally have a break on Sundays, so... Yeah, we'll keep bringing this out as regularly as we can. And as you guys know, if we get promoted, we will probably continue this series on. If we don't, then we will go full throttle with our Road to Glory series, which will start at the beginning of the game launch. I know there's a couple of guys, Josh and a few others in the comments, want this series to continue regardless. And we continue the story of my journey as manager, as Borough Boss, etc. We'll see where it takes us. We can only find out if we keep on bringing you the content and pushing on in our career mode. But until next time, a big thank you for watching, guys. Do take care. See you all in the next one.